And I understand that shortly after, after that, as in setting up the clinic, um, you were doing some work advising the World Health, Health Organization. Yes. How did that come about? And what was that like? Because I'm sure, you know, as, as you've explained, you came over from Nigeria, you, mm. d- you were a midwife, you then started studying FGM, you kind mm. of fell into it, it was something that interests you. Mm. You've now got this great opportunity to go to St. Guy's and Thomas, you mm. s- set that up, and the next thing you know, you're doing it yeah, for the everywhere. world. Like, what what was that like? Was that was that a big shock to you? What was it like being a black woman on that stage? Just just tell us a bit about it. Yeah, being a, at what I um, support lots of young people, mm-hmm. and what I always say to young people is, if you have a vision, and the um, the sky is the limit for you. Because mm-hmm. for me, as a black woman, mm. um, here in the UK, obviously, I had to work my way around things myself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i had to go out there and look and think okay if i work with who how what 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 can i do for them so what i did was um kind of look for all the organizations around Mm -hmm. an international organization write to them tell them about the clinic that we've just set up Mm -hmm. and how we can work together and that's how i've been able to work with i was invited to australia the Mm -hmm. the australian government to give a talk on fgm to work with their um doctors and nurses and midwives as well Mm -hmm. i was invited to gambia so again it's like I go out to yeah. look for opportunity, opportunity myself I see. and that's how I've been able created, to and so. I've worked with WHO and I'm still um, doing ongoing work with them okay. in terms of policies and guidelines for professionals I see and I understand then that all led up to I think 2008 you got your MBE yes. for that yeah. how, how did that come about what was that like? I understand you met the Queen, yes. um, which I guess must have been quite cool. So so if, if you don't mind, tell us about that. How, how did you even end up being nominated for that? What was the ceremony like? The, 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 the thing is, up to today, yeah. I don't really know who nominated me. Okay. But again, I had about 10 of my clients yeah. saying we nominated it. So okay. they must have come together together, because again giving out to the community reaching out to the community i do lots of work in my own time Mm. and i know my husband (laughs) gets really worried about me in terms of in terms of burning out and even yesterday i was in some community engagement for mother's day and all that and i enjoy that so again um about 10 people nominated me mm. at different times and all that. And um, that experience and that feeling, obviously, again, it's rewarding. Mm. And for me, I'm not doing the FGM work or working within the community to be rewarded for, yourself, yeah. for myself. But I'm doing it for my community. Yeah. I'm doing it to engage with the community, young people, men, women, girls, mm. and, and, and the community as a whole. That that was um a very rewarding experience and i never dreamt to meet the yeah. queen yeah. living what was that like? my yeah. poor nigeria <laughs> or my big nigeria i yeah. never I just wanted to come here yeah. um broaden my knowledge bring the experience back to my country and but saying that i've always wanted to meet um mandela that okay. was my dream to yeah. meet Nelson Mandela. And I did all my possible best to meet him, but unfortunately, because when I went to South Africa on two occasions, I went to the house or to the yeah. museum, but I wasn't able to meet him. Yeah, but then I met the Queen, Yeah, which again, very grateful about. And meeting the Queen, it's something that you can't describe. Yeah. You can't describe it. I've met the Queen twice, oh, actually. Wow. Okay. Yeah. The first meeting was before the, um, before my MBE. Um, I had the phone call at work um, and somebody said, oh, this is Buckingham Palace, wow. as they do. <laughs> and I'm like, no. I wow. thought somebody was pulling one You're of my friends. Legs, yeah. I just put the phone down. Oh, so and the so. call came back again yeah. three times. Though. I better leave this. <laughs> and they were like, That's oh, crazy. we'll send you a letter. We're just waiting for your response to confirm that you were coming. 
Oh, wow. like, I didn't receive any letter. Yeah. Like they started shaking, and apparently they sent me an, a letter, an invite, and this was when um, the Queen was going to Kampala for the. Um, Commonwealth um, event. Okay. So apparently, she invited about hundred people, ministers, ambassadors, and all. And I was one of. I see. And I'm like, wow. I was shocked. Like, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so got there. I was whisked with about four other people to another yeah. room to officially meet, meet the, the queen. queen i was shaking and like <laughs> so met the queen and yeah. a year after was That's my when MBE. You got the mbe yeah. i see and so other than the queen mm. have you met any i I, oh yes, I feel like you met Theresa oh, yes. May. I heard you met Theresa May. Yeah, well, Theresa right? May. When Theresa May was the Home Secretary, Secretary definitely yeah. we sit down together yeah. and meetings because she heads the um, FGM Female Genital Mutilations um, uh, meetings. Yeah, and okay. I've met um, Desmond Tutu. Oh wow! Oh yes, yeah, I love Desmond Tutu. Really, really, really um, big character yeah. and. Um, yeah, what else have I met? I've met quite a few yeah. people out there. So which I guess... I'm grateful. Oh, yes, I met the former um, Prime Minister. Which one now? Not um, the one Brown. before. Gordon Brown. After Gordon Brown Gordon as Brown. well. Okay. Yes, yes. 